Cities. 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal. This is the El Donzo and D's Christmas special. I'm El Donzo. I'm D's. And that, uh, that's opener for this one was uh, Bob Rivers. It was a DJ. I can't remember which, uh, which where he was out of. <laughs> Give me. But that was Jingle Hell's Bells, and he put all these songs together in these uh, Christmas things. It's always kind of had an ACDC twinge to it. He's the one that did the uh, Iron Man. He did Iron Man. It's, and, I Am Santa Claus, but yep. it was to the tune of uh, Iron Man by Black Sabbath. Yes, correct to Mundo, correct to Mundo. Well, go ahead and do your plugs. Yes, so. I meant your plug for like the radio stuff and YouTube, yeah. not Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Find us on all of our socials, uh, starting with facebook.com slash eldonzodees. You can also find us on X at El Donzo D's. And of course, most important of all, go to our YouTube page. That is at youtube.com slash El Donzo D's. Make sure you subscribe, like, turn those notifications on, watch us and see our stupid faces. Uh, when we do the show every week, also catch my sports show on live. Uh, Hanging, Hanging with, with D's. D's. Usually do that every Wednesday or Thursday night live. Uh, so yeah, do that. Merry Christmas. Okay, so in the in the last hour, welcome to the second hour. Like once again, this is going to be our final on air <laughs> show uh, for the year. Next week's yeah. going to be a rerun, likely. We may do a YouTube show depending on our schedules, but we'll I see. think we should. I think yeah. we should do a YouTube show, lighten it up a little bit, uh, take the edge off, report some news, and you know, not have the constraints of you know time and everything like that. Or the FCC. Or the FCC. Yeah, F D S F C C. Was it that was, uh, what was that Steve Earle song? Yeah. Which we tried getting on here to no avail. Anyway, yeah. going back in the last segment, we were talking about Rand Paul's, what was it, Festivus for the Rest of Us, or what was that? Yeah, yeah, grievance, his airing of grievances, if which, you were a uh, Seinfeld fan. Which is all the, uh, I mean, he was talking about all of the wasteful spending the government's done this year. Correct? $900 billion is what nine hundred billion to. Transgender monkey tests and uh, $170 million worth of military equipment that was just left outside to, uh, to rot. Yeah. Now, if you... If you go back and look at everything we left in Afghanistan, okay, comes out to estimated ten billion dollars in equipment. All right, now we've got twenty. Like, there's like twenty two thousand Humvees. Uh, there was thirty three M seventeen helicopters, thirty three Black Hawks. There was various planes, eight thousand trucks. You've got sixty four thousand machine guns. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It, like M16s, M4 assault rifles is what they could. 360,000 of those. So much of this stuff. Basically armed a small country. Yes. Armored personnel carriers, 169 armored personnel like tanks. Okay. You could arm a small country, which is exactly what they did with this $10 million yeah. they left behind. And we covered that on one of the shows when this happened. I think we were podcasting at the time. Yeah. Really not. Oh, yeah. We talked about this. And we have seen the Taliban arm themselves with our equipment that yeah. we just left there. Not to mention the fact the 14 Marines that got killed at the what was the Kabul airport. Yeah. You know, if this... That reminds me of that scene in uh, Full Metal Jacket. Got some nice Arvin rifles to sell you. Never been fired and only dropped once. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, that's... We watched it with our own eyes. We know this happened, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely happened. Okay. Well, John Kirby little twit he is he's the uh, national security council spokesperson he has vehemently denied allegations that the u.s deliberately left weapons in afghanistan during the botched withdrawal of american troops characterizing such claims as fallacies and farces now if you watch this is where they get it deliberately plausible to, we didn't deliver it we had to get out of there there's no other reason they left it than deliberately everything the government does is deliberate you're going to tell me that we just pulled out of Af Afghanistan on a, oops, oh, we didn't mean to leave $10 billion worth right. of equipment there. And why did they have to get out of there, like, literally overnight? Like, you know. They didn't. They right. didn't. This was just a couple days ago he said this. This isn't old news. He just came out and said this. He said, let me remind you, please take the opportunity to remind you, we didn't just leave a bunch of weapons in Afghanistan. This is a fallacy. 
This is a farce. What we did over the course of our 20 years in Afghanistan, of course, with congressional approval and consult and consultations, was armed and helped equip the Afghan National Security Forces. Well, maybe that's what we did leading up to the point that dumbass pulled out of Afghanistan. You know what? His dad should have pulled out. Of, yeah, never mind. I might even <laughs> get into it. We, maybe we, we wouldn't be in this predicament right now. That's all I'm saying about it. Now, before we get into this, uh, we, we promised we have to really go in depth with the cold open. How that came about. But. Easy with those words. Uh, yeah, we got to go deep. Speaking of in we deep. We got to dig deep. Yeah. Well, I can't even say it. I was going to say it. <clears throat> Epstein files to be released. Hollywood elites in panic mode. This is according to the Gateway Pundit. And of course, they overemphasize everything. But there's supposed to be, I believe it's 170 names that are going to be released. Yep. That are tied to Jeffrey Epstein. Have you been keeping up with this? A little bit, yeah. I know that there was a, uh, a I don't know if it was a lawsuit or a hearing coming up on one of the um, Jane Doe's victims, basically, mm -hmm. saying that uh, she's petitioning the court to make sure that her name is not released because she lives in a foreign country and she fears for her life. Um she missed the deadline, but they changed lawyers, so they're they're possibly doing that. But yeah, there's uh, and these aren't so. These 170 names don't automatically assume that every single one of them is a pedophile because these are staff, these are pilots, these are you and there's 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 people that were, weren't doing anything, were not doing anything salacious that were around Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, I believe there that were 100. percent There are probably a great deal of these celebrities that were basically just kind of taking advantage of his stature and his jets and his private island. Um, now, are some of them <laughs> scumbag pedophiles? Without question. But uh, well, Now, wait a minute. I want, I want to crack into something here. Now, Bill Clinton was bosom buddies with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. Bill Clinton's name's all over this. He was there numerous times. Now, I want to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question, but I, what I'm doing is asking the listeners questions right now, but I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it in the form of asking you one. Okay. I want to, once you put yourself in the situation, this mindset, you are either a Hollywood producer or you're a politician and you know, Jeffrey Epstein good. And you know, Jeffrey Epstein likes young girls, but you don't know. I mean, you're not thinking kids at this point, maybe, but you know, he likes his young ladies. All right. He's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of connections. Jeffrey Epstein goes up to you, D's, and this is to anybody listening. Whether you're married or not, whether you've got a relationship or not, he goes, hey, I'm going to my private island. We got a couple of 19-year-old uh, Taiwanese girls that will do anything you want. He says, what do you think? Three days? Come on out. Sit on the beach. You know, get your jollies off. How many guys are going to pass that up? Oh, very few. Very few. Now, they don't, they don't have to know they're underage. Yeah. Okay? They don't have to know that. They just think they're young. A lot of guys are going to go for that. Now, Jeffrey Epstein isn't saying it like I'd say it to you, Dees. I mean, if I was in Epstein's position, I'd say, hey, Dees, let's, let's go down here and, and, you know, get some chicks. And that's what we do, and we keep it to ourselves. What Jeffrey Epstein was doing was videotaping these people with underage girls, the same thing the Chicoms do, which is why Hunter Biden's guilty as hell. Yeah, and that's how we know they own them. There's going to be people on that list that were – that appear on the flight logs and whatnot many, 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 many times. You will never convince me that they didn't know what was going on. There's no way they couldn't have. Now, Alan Dershowitz, who I love to death, I'd love to meet him. Someday. If I could meet one person, well, I'd be, be a lot of it, but he'd be at the top of it. He's come out and said, release everything you got on me. Release the logs. I've already told you everything. Release it. I don't care. And he's come out squeaky clean because he took his family with him. He took an offer. Yeah, he even filed a lawsuit when he this did. was all coming out. And said, they hey, were like, hey. okay, yeah, we're, we'll, we're done talking about you. You're fine. <clears throat> yeah. So he's good to go. So you're going to have people like that. Of course, he may or may not have known what Jeffrey Epstein, the salacious going ons, goings on that he was up to. But I'm really interested to see what comes out of these 170 names. Because mm -hmm. I think you're going to see people that, either denied or thought they'd never get named being around him. Yeah. Many of them have already said, well, yeah, I, you know, I went there on a vacation, blah, 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 probably as a preemptive strike, but it's, it's, it's going to come out again, big here, probably by the end of January, early February, when this is supposed to be released. 
So it's going to be all over the news. Now, we have to talk about this. We have to get to it. This thing at the at the Capitol with this with this guy that that got his uh <laughs> got got pounded in the uh in the hearing room. Mhm. We talked about this a little bit. Now, he was he wasn't what what was he an aide? Yeah, he's a he, staffer. He staffer, staffer, yeah. To to Senator Ben Cardin. And this this uh this dude's name is uh let's see here. Did something weird. I can't. Yeah, uh Aiden Maisie Sorobsky, which is kind of a strange name. Yeah. So he's a staffer to Senator Cardin. A, and, a uh, legislative aide is what they're legislative aide. Yeah. Now, if you remember Cardin, you know, of course a Democrat has a snap off about Jan 6 and he goes I refer to the US Capitol as a sacred space because it's so much more than a building where the Senate and House of Representatives meet and conduct business. It is the embodiment of our ideals, our inspirations and hopes. Well, I'm not hoping to get pounded, okay? Not just to Americans but also to all of humanity. Well, guess what? Those words are coming back to haunt him because his staffer's getting bent over by the bear, right? Look at that, these. And we were talking about uh, the Senator Cardin's uh, aides or aide or staffer or whatever that was uh, on the last segment. A member of his staff. A, a member. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling there's going to be some uh, deep um, probing into these leaks, yeah. what I think is going to happen with there this. There was some deep probing. All He's right. like, see, he lost. Did you, we we talked about his name. His, his name is Aiden Maisie Sorobsky. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. something like Aiden Maisie. <laughs> so, I don't know what it was. Yeah. Uh, he lost his job. Of course, he, uh, as we were talking about, he, uh, he filmed himself getting, uh, having, what are the words I want to... Homosexual intercourse. Homosexual... Ba- yeah. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Back Sir. man. Anyway, yeah. So he was in there getting his uh, his stuff uh, plowed. Um, anyway, he, he, just, he just made a tweet. Of course, he's lost his job. Of course, we talk about this all the time. Why would you put this out there? Why, a, why would you go into the Senate the hearing room and do this? videotape it and then put it out there for all your buddies to put in the spank bank. I don't know. I have a question. Yeah. This is the Senate building. Correct. How, how are there not like, where's the security? Right. How are there not security cameras in every corner of that building? You know what I'm saying? Well, that's like, a really good point. I never thought about that. Like, like, yeah. How did nobody notice this guy? And this could be even a bigger conspiracy. How did nobody notice this this young guy bringing in a stranger, question mark, or was it somebody that maybe hangs around that building, if you know what I'm saying? Well, there's got to be some legal ramifications to what he's done. Yeah, too, they're, they're talking about uh, potential charges that it could include uh, trespassing, indecent exposure, misuse of public property, all kinds of stuff. But again... How did th- how did he get this guy in that building without somebody you know security there? Do we have security at this building? Like what the hell is going on here? And how did they get so far as to into one of these uh, committee uh, chamber rooms, whatever you want to call it, without being noticed and and then well completely get you know. You know, Merry Christmas to him. You know, you better not pout. You better not cry. You better not scream. I'm going in dry. Um, <laughs> this kid has come out. And he made this this post on on Twitter. Uh, he says, "This is and you got to feel bad for the kid." You know, after all, he's probably walking a little no, funny I don't. anyway. He says, "This has been a difficult time for me as I have been attacked for who I love to pursue a political agenda, while some of my actions in the past have shown poor judgment." <laughs> you think? I love my job and would never disrespect my workplace. Any attempts to characterize my actions otherwise are fabricated, and I will be exploring what legal options are available to me in these matters. Now it goes on. As for the accusations regarding Congressman Congressman Max Miller, I have never seen the congressman and had no opportunity or cause to yell or confront him. I guess Max Miller came out and said he got into it with this kid anyway that's regardless yeah he, he apparently was shouting free palestine at at miller while miller was being interviewed by nbc 
And you know, he, which he is funny because, because if this kid would have done this in Palestine, they'd have thrown him off a roof. Yeah, they, well, they, they would have executed him. Yeah, they would have beheaded him. So now he turns us into, I, as I have been attacked for who I love to pursue a political agenda. Yeah, I'm more focused on I would never disrespect my workplace. I was getting to that. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And then it goes down, while some of my, while some of my actions in the past, uh, yeah, really, have, have shown poor judgment. But you're right. I love my job and would never disrespect my workplace. I can't think of anything else that's more disrespectful to a workplace than being bent over a table in the middle of it where everybody sits. Imagine the poor cleaning crew. You know, you're working for barely minimum wage, third shift to go and clean these rooms and offices. And you're sitting at home after a long day and you're getting ready to, you know, eat your burrito and you look up and you see a video of this oh, this kid just I'd lose my burrito. I tossed yeah, my cookies. And you're you're like, wait a minute. I was literally on my hands and knees scrubbing the floor right there because I thought, you know, well, imagine the, imagine the Senator uh, sitting there. Man, whose spot is that? <laughs> I'd be like, no, moving to the, no, I'm not even coming back here. Not until this place. I have a theory of whose lousy. spot it was probably the Senator that was not seen on, on the video other than his. You think hairy, I, I do. I, I do in order for them to pull this off. I, I, I got to think that whoever he was with was somebody else that is tied to the Senate. I don't know. It's disgusting either way. I would absolutely freak the F out if I found out that that had happened. Now, talking about perverts, because this is just not, this is sick. Who the hell does this? It's one thing to do it. You remember back when we were young, we took a girlfriend somewhere. I mean, it happened. Yeah. We're not being X-rated here. But it was always kind of fun, you know, in the laundromat or somewhere, you know, it's like, oh, my God, or you know, on, park on, a truck somewhere. On the manager's desk at Diana Foods in 1993, but I wouldn't know anything about no, that. No, 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 <clears throat> you wouldn't. I'd, anyway, you would do stuff like that when you're young and in love and you got lust with you or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But to videotape it and put it in a group is just nuts. Now, talking about sickos. Now. Kendall Stevens, who is a well-known LGBTQ activist, okay, from Philadelphia, is taken into custody on charges of sexual assault against minors. Whoops. Oh, yeah. Uh, Stevens, 37, who urged for more inclusive hate crime legislation within the city, faces serious allegations involving two young boys under the age of 13. Uh, Stevens is the same woman who survived a brutal hate crime, probably a Jesse Smollett BS deal. Brutal hate crime in her Point Breeze home in August uh, 2020, in which she attacked her, Tamisha Waring, pleaded guilty to aggravated assault and conspiracy. In the wake of her own experience with violence, Stevens had become a voice for LGBTQ plus blah, 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 rights. Her calls for legislative change led to her standing side by side with officiators, including District Attorney Larry Krasner, to establish a LGBTQ FYXN. BZ advisory board aimed at providing resources and support for crime victims within the LGBTQ community aimed at providing resources and support for crime victims. Do you, do you get what's going on here? Do you see this? They come out here and say, we care about everybody. We care about victims. We don't want hate crimes, but she's raping two. He's raping two 13 year old boys. Let's call him what he is. Yeah. Now, which leads me into my next story. You know, if that's not bad enough, at least we have a light at the end of the tunnel. Accused Florida sex predator could be first to receive death penalty under DeSantis's signature law. Unfortunately, it's not this uh, this this dude who uh, what was her name? Ken Kendall Stevens. So well, I'm going to read through this, and I want to ask you about it. Okay. Okay. Florida prosecutor is using the case of a man indicted for sex crimes involving children to test a new Florida law that allows child rapists to be executed. On Friday, State Attorney William Gladson said a grand jury had indicted Joseph Andrew Giampa on six counts of sexual battery upon a person under 12 years of age and three counts of promoting a sexual performance by a child. So, that 
pretty much tells you that he raped a child and videotaped it and promoted it on the internet or the dark web or whatever. Now they're talking about executing him because DeSantis passed this law, I think it was last year, uh, that sex predators could be put to death. Should be. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree wholeheartedly with it. Anybody that sexually abuses a child is is messed up. Yep. And they need to be put out of their... I mean, this is just disgusting. So, my question to you is, at what point do you think we should go ahead and whack pedophiles? When they're found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Like, if it's, it's, if it's cut and dry, same thing with, with, like, murder. If it's, like, no chance of appeal, like, boom, red-handed, whatever, front of the Just line. Just off them? Front of the line, yep. Okay. I agree with you. Now, I you, really don't want to see this go into statutory rape territory. I don't either because, you know, the, there are situations where the parents might consent or, you know, you could be talking about a 17 year old with a 19 year old when the age of consent is 18, like that would be going too far. But, but if it's knowingly like sexually assaulting, like an eight year old boy or girl, when you're a full blown adult and there is no chance to prove that you didn't do it. In other words, you're, you're guilty unquestionably you die. Now, if we go back to that Kendall Stevens story before this, okay, how how blatantly obvious is it becoming that all this men in the women's restrooms and men swimming in sports and sharing locker rooms with teenage girls, how much more obvious does this have to be that this is a perversion? Yeah. This isn't about somebody's simple rights to express who they are. This has become a perversion, and they're getting these people brainwashed to constantly support it. They they do. Well, if you don't allow this to happen, then you're a bigot and you're a racist and you're this no, and that. It's and a disease and the only cure is 0.223. Yes. Any any type of lead projectile yeah. at a at a fast Yeah, I'm not I'm not second. picky. Nine mil, 38, why not, 40, why 45. Why not make it slow? Why not make it slow? <laughs> Just peg them with 22s. <laughs> Okay, I'm, Just, I'm down. All right, well, we're, we're getting out of the radio business and going into a new <laughs> one, aren't we? This is the old Donzo and D show, and I want to open this up with a story that just caught my eye. Okay, we were talking about this a little bit. This is a Fox News story. American Society of Magical Negroes trailer sparks anger for saying white people are the most dangerous animal. The film uh, is described on its website as a fresh satirical comedy about a young man Aaron, who is recruited into a secret society of magical black people who dedicate their lives to a cause of utmost importance, making white people's lives easier. Uh, It goes on that a magical Negro is a black character, appears in a plot solely to help a white character, and then vanishes. So the whole plot of this movie is pretty much that the magical black magical Negroes or whatever it is are supposed to keep white people happy so white people don't mistreat them. <laughs> now, if anybody actually pays m- money to go see this garbage, I'll be damned. But this reminded me of something. And these, I don't think you've ever heard this, but it reminded me of this. I'm going to play it for everybody. This is a throwback to Rush Limbaugh. Okay, this was, I remember when this aired. This was back in like 2008. And I couldn't believe it aired. But I'm going to air it now. This is what it reminded me of. Roll clip. Barack, the magic Negro, lives in D.C. The L.A. Times, they call him that cause he's not authentic like me. Yeah, the guy from the L.A. paper said he make guilty whites feel good. They'll vote for him and not for me cause he's not from the hood. Wow. You've never heard that before, have you? No. It no, goes no. on and on and on. But when I read the, the headline, American Society of Magical Negroes, I just, Barack the Magic Negro, it just popped into my head. What can I say? All right. Can you imagine like tr- trying to get that movie made if it was reversed, though? Like, No. Yeah, w- wouldn't it never happen. Never happen. No, it'd be like, like doing Clayton Bigsby at this point right. from Dave Chappelle's show. 
Now I got I got to tell you something that I thought thought was really funny. There there's a dog, okay, uh, Israeli Defense Forces. They have a uh, it's like a bomb sniffing dog, and the dog's name is Aisha, okay. And Aisha the dog is going through Gaza, sniffing out bombs, okay, and then you know leading them to Hamas terrorists. Aisha was the name of the Prophet Muhammad's uh, nine-year-old wife. The Muslims are losing their mind about this. <laughs> Many Muslims, and they're also afraid of dogs, especially black dogs. Because uh, hadiths, which is, uh, I call them the devil among dogs, and they order Muslims to kill the dogs. So the Muslims around the world are flipping their lid about this, that they actually, the IDF actually named a dog Aisha. And there's people saying, well, this isn't right. This is insulting. And how insulting is it if you're a Hamas terrorist and you're being sniffed out from, by a dog that's named Aisha after Prophet Muhammad's wife? Well, it's his nine-year-old daughter. He was a, let, let me tell you something about the Prophet Muhammad. He was a pedophile. What do we do with pedophiles, D's? Kill them. Kill them. So just saying, I thought it was funny as hell. I really did. They named the dog Aisha. I thought it was pretty good. Good on them. That was like that story about... I don't know how true it was. Blackjack Pershing uh, soaking the bullets in pig's blood. Mm. before. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was funny. I mean, you're dead. Who, who gives a damn anyway at that point? And we were talking about earlier in the show, uh, Gaza hospital chief admitted to being a Hamas commander, a, a rank of brigadier general. They caught him when they went to the hospital. I remember when they go into these hospitals in Gaza, everybody thinks, you bomb in hospitals, you're going into the hospitals. No, they're going. this is where Hamas is hiding out. They flushed a whole bunch of these idiots out of there. And the hospital chief is actually, like I said, the rank of brigadier general in Hamas. Now, he's calling the leaders of Hamas that have fled Qatar and are not helping them out anymore cowards. Now, I don't know how much of that to believe. You know, you're sitting there, you've just been captured. You go say whatever you got to say to, you know, not be not have one put in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. Um, But on the other hand. Remember. That the whole jihadi thing is to spill your blood for Islam, right? Yeah. Why are these people surrendering? Maybe they got to the point, maybe it's gotten to the point where they're not buying what they're in Sinwar, their leaders are selling them. Very possible. Well, it is very possible. They've just been kept there in the dark without any assistance, without any reinforcements. And they're surrendering. We're, we're talking about people that would normally go out and hijack airliners, okay? You, you, which you saw Al Qaeda do on 9 11, went and hijacked airliners, flew them in, which now I'm not making light of that, but that takes some Mazi to get in a, what was it, a 737? Yeah, 2737, something like that. 2730, yeah. whatever. Getting a commercial uh, airliner and pilot it right into a building into your fiery demise. Now, these guys are just giving up. That's a hell of a sales pitch. Well, I mean, that's what happened, though. Yeah, no, you know, you're right. Suicide bombers and all this other sticks. Uh, so this guy, look at this. These guys are giving up their arms. So now, meanwhile, you've got Joe Biden trying to urge Benjamin Netanyahu to show restraint and stop. Well, you got to ease up. You got to have a ceasefire. Who in the hell in the right mind is going to have a ceasefire at this point? Nah. No, I mean, they've, they've got them to the point, uh, the breaking point. Like, why why let up? They're stripping them down naked. They've, st- they've still got hostages in there. I think they've actually managed to get 40 more hostages out. Yeah, and we, lost, we lost an American one, too. Yes, we did, didn't we? Yeah, the older gentleman. But why in the hell would the IDF go, nah, you know, we're just going to stop now. I say eradicate them. And not the Palestinian people, even though they voted for Hamas. I'm not saying that. Then maybe they didn't have any choice at that point. But no, go in, keep going, keep getting them. You know, Iran's threatening, Yemen's Yemen's threatening them. They're launching missiles at our carriers right now. We're constantly shooting down missiles. I don't want this to go go to <clears throat> excuse me, third world war, and it shouldn't. You know what? If you want a peace deal, if you're Iran or you're Yemen and you're PO'd about this. Why don't you just mind your own business? Saudi Arabia is erecting a wall to keep out refugees from Palestine. 
<laughs> so is Egypt. Sounds no, familiar. Yeah, right? They don't want them. So why is I, and I think Iran's doing the same thing. So why is Iran pushing this? I don't think we, I don't think we as Americans want a third world war here. No. But all Iran and Yemen and the surrounding countries have to do is let the IDF go in and root out Hamas. And then you don't bring Hamas in, we're all good to go. If you don't care enough for the Palestinian people to let them into your country, why are you launching rockets at the IDF? Why are you launching rockets at Americans? Mm -hmm. Maybe they want this to kick off. That's my only point to it. I can't figure out any other reason why. Right. And then, of course, you know what happens with China. What's China's goal in all this? Because, well, obviously, it's taking minds off Taiwan. Yeah, they're it's just sitting back watching and waiting. Vladimir Putin, excuse me, is loving this. Absolutely. Because every time we go to bat for Israel and we stand up for them or we send aid to them or we sell them weapons, that's less stuff we can be giving to Ukraine. I believe that this was likely... I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Likely set up from the word go. And I believe Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin knew far in advance when this was going to happen. Wouldn't surprise me. So, you know, just one more. It's my future's so bright, I got to wear shades, these. That's what I tell people. Did you hear about this? The two-year-old black, you know, I, I didn't know what to think of this. Two-year-old black girl cuffed by a white child for Rosa Parks reenactment at Florida daycare. <laughs> Look at this little. Now, the parents freaked out about this. They're like, oh, and she looks rightfully so, so. She looked so distraught, she didn't know what was happening. And I thought, okay, well, how is a two-year-old even going to know what's going on? But then again, who in the hell thought this was a good idea? Right. A white kid cuffing a black kid in a daycare? Well, what the hell are you thinking? D yeah, that uh, <laughs> unacceptable. Yeah, stupid of the week right there. Whoever came up with that idea in the meeting, I'd have been like, look, Look, if you get any more thoughts, let them go. Just don't even open your mouth anymore. I don't know. I thought it was... I, okay, I'm not going to lie. I laughed at that picture and laughed. I looked at that picture and laughed. It's a little white kid cuffing a black girl. I'm not laughing because it's racist. I'm not, I'm not doing that. It was just like, and the faces are blurred out, like it's an actual thing going on here. Building Brains Academy is the name of the day. <laughs> building Brains. Some jokes write themselves. They should start by building their own brains and not doing this. Uh, so anyway, Dees, what do you got for us? Uh, well, not much because we're uh, about out of time for this segment. Ooh, but we're coming up on uh, the eighth segment, which is usually where we get a little frisky, isn't it? Now? Yeah, yeah. Coming up, we're going to talk a little bit about Tucker and aliens and... The, uh, the big controversy on Twitch. We're talking about Tucker. You mean Michelle Obama? <laughs> yeah. Oh, never mind. Big Mike. <laughs> big Mike. All that more, and we return here to the El Donzo and Dees. I'm El Donzo. Uh, I'm Dees. <laughs> and we're getting into the, uh, we're, we're in the last segment of the second hour of the last show of the year. So now we get into the fully monkey shines. Uh, yeah, we kind of touched on this last week a little bit tucker carlson uh had david grush on and they talked aliens i haven't had a chance to watch the whole thing but uh in summary tucker had some things to, to say afterwards and uh these are these are direct quotes from tucker they're not aliens they've always been here and i do think it's spiritual uh he says uh that's my view again. It's not provable, but based on the evidence, if the U.S. government has, in fact, had contact with these beings and has entered into some sort of agreement with them, it's a very heavy thing. He previously said the things he has learned regarding aliens are so dark that he won't even tell his wife. So there are parts of the story that I don't understand at all and are really, really dark. It's so dark that I haven't even told my wife about it. Parts of the government don't want you to know about it, but part of it is the public can't deal with it. It's too far out, and the implications are too profound. Really? Very interesting. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, they're they're not coming, folks. They're here. <laughs> well, they I, you know, are I'd here. That too. I mean, I, I'd buy that. Uh, the Atlanta Journal has uh, got a personal section, and this one kind of caught a little bit of attention. It reads as follows. Single black female seeks male companionship. Ethnicity, not important. I'm very good looking. I love to play. I love long walks in the woods, riding in your pickup truck. 
hunting, camping, fishing trips, cozy winter nights, laying by the flyer, and candlelight dinners that will have me eating out of your hand. Does she have a penis? When you get home from work, I will be at the front door wearing only what nature gave me. Call me at... 404-555-1212 and ask for Daisy. Over 1,500 men found themselves talking to the Atlanta Humane Society about an eight-week-old black Labrador oh retriever. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, look, you've got to admire the, the marketing. That is pretty good. Uh, speaking of um, waiting at home naked, have you, did you catch anything that was going on in the... The Twitch world? No. Do, do you know what Twitch is? Uh, no. It's a streaming site. Okay, yeah. Gaming is, is the big thing, but they also have a just chatting thing. So anyway, uh, women started doing their streams with what appeared to be they were naked from, you know, naked, but the camera cut off like right where... The breasts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Twitch was like, you know what? We're going to allow artistic, artistic nudity, not sexual content, but artistic nudity. And Cue in Jeffrey Tubin. Leave it to the uh, community of nerds. And I'm a gamer, so it's whatever. But these are very talented, very smart computer geeks that decided that they could use AI and create very realistic versions of either themselves or other characters that would were allowed to then be fully nude. And uh, so, yeah, Twitch got a hell of an uptick in viewership and it turned out a lot of them were like OnlyFans models, basically pushing traffic to their websites. And after about, I think, three days, Twitch was like, wait a minute, maybe this was a mistake. So they reverted everything back and uh, they they opened a can that they can't really close because now you have uh, these streamers are still staying on. But now they have the black sensor bars covering their oh uh, what fun is that right i get it but you know they're still doing it but they opened this can and now i don't know that they can get the uh worm back in yeah i heard uh senator Cardin staffer had that problem too <laughs> open the can couldn't get the worm back in or get it out yeah so the the gaming world was uh quite a buzz with all of that stuff uh it, idaho 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 Utaho. Uh, did you see this about the first in and out burger <clears throat> opened up in Idaho? I did not. This was, I had this actually a couple weeks ago, but we never got to it. But I, I, in and out burger, big West coast staple, super popular out there. Opened their very first location in Meridian, which is a Boise suburb. And, uh, the locals were, were, were apparently really excited about it because they camped out the night before in 30 degree weather and had to wait in their car in the drive through for up to 8 hours for a burger for a burger what the hell is wrong with you people why not just go there the next day right well and to be fair i i still every day that i drive by it during lunch hour the uh, Chick-fil-A on Veterans Parkway, right by the studio. Yeah, jam-packed. I don't get it. It's not even that good of a sandwich. Like, well, I think it I think it is good. It's okay, but it's not wait in my car for hours. I good. never have. I've never waited that long for Chick-fil-A. But I don't I never went at noon when no. all the other No, swing, yeah. I've been through there like, you know, three thirty, you know, it's off not hours. Bad at that point. But a- any place in a big city is like that, whether you're in Morton, where you're in Bloomington, wherever you're at. If you go at around 12 o'clock, that's the worst time to go get. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. Sitting there. Either go in early or go in late. Vegas or bust. But I, I just eight hours for a hamburger. Like what? I, I, don't, I, I don't. I've never had an in and out burger, but I don't know how good they can be. But anyway, I mean, I was going to give a shout out to actually a place in Morton Steak and Shake. The Steak and Shakes in our area have gone downhill. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't expect them to be around a whole lot. No, longer. no, no. no. Go, to, go to the Steak and Shake in Morton. You're going to be pleasantly surprised. It was it was under 11 bucks, and it was fast. It was hot. It was fresh. The people there were nice. It was clean. It was good. Anyway, right. go ahead. Uh, you got the last one. Go ahead. You wanted to get that one in. Ooh, yeah. yeah, yeah. See if I got time here. Barely go. Okay. Christmas time sex leads to more penis fractures. <laughs> Did you know about that? I was not aware. No. This is from the Post. Scientists studied 
3,421 German men between 2005 and 2021 and found the chances of sustaining the painful groin injury, groin injury, especially among those in middle age, rose significantly between December 24th and December 26th. Well, that's because they're married and they're middle aged and they probably only get it once a year. So that's when the injury's going to happen. There it is. Merry Christmas. Here it is. You're not getting it again. Wow. 